Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 23. My name is Keith. This is Doug. It has been a while since we've done this, my friend. How you doing? Uh, yeah, it has been a while. You know, we've had some family things go on. I've yeah. been on vacation, some work trips. Uh, just got back from vacation. It was great. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. It's, It's been, we didn't really, we knew it was going to be a break. But we didn't going to be that much of a break. I had a death in the family, unfortunately. You've been traveling and then work and all those fun things. But we're back in the saddle now. Reunited and it feels so good. See, I had to sing it because otherwise yeah. YouTube will strike us for the licensing. They can only do, what, a five-second uh, blow a clip or something? Yeah, they have that, like, they have weird rules. And what's funny on that note, uh, They'll even, they're very strict. They'll even flag. So you notice when uh, we have episodes where we'll show a trailer. So let's say we're doing a summer movie rundown and we show a trailer. They will flag it for a copyright violation, even on the back end. Now, they, they don't take it down because if I click on it, it pops up and says, well, the owner allows this. Well, that's because it's a trailer and it's already publicly available. So if you guys notice, that's why we don't show like real clips of movies because they'll just take it down. They're super strict about that. So yeah, it kind of stinks. I wish from a creative, cause we don't make money on this, right? <laughs> but if anything, we lose money. Uh, <laughs> and so it would be nice to be able to like actually play music and do things without getting slammed. But you know, Hey, I get it. All righty. <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, you want to do some nerd news. Yeah, let's get it. All right, let's do it. Cue up the nerd news. Nerd News. So as you're setting that up, uh, the first uh, story we're going to talk about is Game Informer Magazine. If you don't know, I believe, is that the one that GameStop would uh, give you? They, they partnered with. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I was having issues with the screen share. See, guys, we're rusty. Here we go. Now I got it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, that was the one that GameStop had partnered with, which honestly I thought was a great idea. Um, I liked it. Uh, they had good articles in it, and um, but they're they're shut down now. So, yeah, yeah. and that uh, kind of tells you uh, a lot of things are going digital. You know, you look at newspapers and magazines like uh, I mean, I don't know. Time is still going, but it's strong. But like Time and Cosmo, like for yeah, I'm trying to think of big publication magazines Nash- are yeah. slowly National Geographic uh, into digital yeah. and not paper form. Yeah, you still have, yeah, you, you still have like the big players. You know, you have yeah. like uh Vanity Fair, the Hollywood Reporter. The thing is, like you said, most of them are going digital. Um the hard part in, in all of that is that uh, newspapers are the same way. And if you're like the New York Times or one of those, they have found a way to monotonize differently. You have to pay for a subscription. Um I do know with Apple News, and this is interesting. Um, you can pay a monthly subscription kind of like you would for Netflix. And they not only give you newspapers, but they give you magazines as well. And I, I, I've always wondered what was in that bundle. Personally, I like magazines. I think they're they're cool for a quick read. When I had Game Informer, this is my problem. And this is the same problem I have with uh, just normal books. Right? I, you know me, I'm a digital guy. Mm-hmm. But with Game Informer, I would collect them. When I had my GameStop membership, I would collect them throughout the years and they would stack up. I mean, we're talking full stack right yeah. when i would finally have vacation from work we would go to like my in-laws across the state or whatever i would pack that and i would spend my downtime on holidays flipping through the game informers throughout the year and i loved them they were fun it was great but it wasn't something that i could do i just didn't really find time to do and so in the last part of my whole subscription i think i switched it to digital and guess what i never once opened up the app (laughs) to get into it so i don't know man like this is bittersweet for me i I get it it makes sense but i love the magazine was good a lot of people like oh my god now we're only stuck with uh, ign i think they're the only ones that are really publishing that are you know left but you know you know from here we get most of our news uh, from polygon at least i do for video gaming and that's a website and they're owned by it. I think they're tied into The Verge, which, of course, who's publishing this article? So, but yeah, man, I don't know. It's an end of an era. It kind of makes me sad. I, I wish the digital would have worked. Uh, I don't think these publications have found, have found a good way to, you know, tap into it to make it readily available. So, I, you know, if they were good enough, I would probably pay if it was cheap enough, like a couple bucks a month 
um, if it was digital and put it on a website, put it behind a paywall or something. And maybe that does exist, but I don't know. This made me think of the dude we see at the video gaming conference and the comic book conference. Remember him? He has a, um, a retro magazine. I know Brian's going to kick us for not knowing the guy's name, but he has that magazine that he does out of Iowa. Yeah. And I'm always wondering, like, man, I wonder about profit loss on that, how hard that is for him. And we've talked about having him on the show, but it's got to be difficult to have a, a published color magazine nowadays. Yeah, definitely. And I'm looking up the guy here, I'm, but the uh, internet is going slow for some reason. Yeah, he also brings a lot of uh, arcade cabinets up mm-hmm. to the uh, con. He does. <clears throat> he actually he does. Yeah. is at uh, the Kansas City Comic Con, so he's a little bit uh, a bigger guy. Yeah, and, and he does a lot of stuff, and we talked about having him mom. I know we have his card, but anyway, this just brought that up for me. I just kind of wonder how tough it is to do a magazine, because, I mean, if Game Informer has a partnership, and how much do you think Game Informer failing is tied to the partnership that they did with Games, you know, GameStop, because it's going downhill? So. I think a lot. I, I say that only because I never knew about Game Informer until I would be checking out at GameStop, and they'd say, hey, if you get this... GameStop kind of rewards program will give you a copy of Game Informer with it. So other than that, I never knew about Game Informer outside of GameStop. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think that was the case for a lot of people. Um, I, I was not a subscriber before the, you know, but I knew of it. it did exist before the GameStop agreement. So, you know, but it's fun. We talked about this recently where you can, you and our friend Jeff and even Brian were talking about, you can go back and read old issues right what were you reading that on you were talking about old magazines uh there's an app that you told me about and i recently got an ipad but oh we're again, gonna talk about that. are you using panels for that i am but okay uh, i think we're bringing hold, that up later hold, i did okay my apologies everybody so i didn't know yeah. i didn't know you were using panels for that i think oh, it what, works great but i'd okay. love to talk about that as our we are topic. but i think what i'm thinking of is we had a conversation about exodus which is the DOS video game thing that you can play all the old DOS video games and they do an add on. And with that add on, they have old magazines inside of it. We're talking PC gamer. I did not know that. Electronic gaming monthly, but that's not tied to panels. And I think probably that's what I was thinking of. So I apologize. I got ahead of ourselves. Well, I just learned something there. So I've been using panels. Yeah. And I think uh, our friends had mentioned they read uh, Nintendo Power. Yeah, and a lot of those. So that's where I was going with that. But we'll get into panels here in a bit. So sorry to get ahead of myself. No, no, that's good. Now this next one, it's not really new news. It is because it happened while we were controversial gone. Controversial news. It is. So uh, go ahead and take us there. So uh, there was an announcement for a new. Um, is it uh, Fantastic Four? It's Fantastic Four, but th- this is really their continuation of Avengers. Okay. Yeah. So Fantastic Four announcement, but the, on stage, all these Doctor Dooms come out, but one Doctor Doom came out, and it was uh, Robert Downey Jr. So what do you think about this? How does this hit with you at first? I want your opinion first. I have strong opinions. My <laughs> opinion, and I'm not very good on the comic books. I love mm-hmm. the movies. My opinion is Robert Downey Jr. Jr. has already played someone in the Marvel Universe, so I thought they should have brought in some new blood, some new actor. I agree because in them. my theory, all these Marvel movies are in the same universe. They're all connected. So I know they're actors, but he's already been Iron Man. He should have stayed as Iron Man. That's just my thought. I, I think to me, and I agree with you, in the fact that, look, I love Robert Downey Jr. He's amazing. But people get used to seeing these characters in a certain light. Now, some people are speculating. There is a run in the comics where Tony Stark does become Iron Man. See, and I didn't know that part. Yeah. But that's a variant, meaning you know how they always do these multiverse things where they split you. And, and the reason why comics do that is because they'd always get new writers and new artists that they were trading back and forth between those two studios, between DC and Marvel. And you had to pretend something didn't happen so somebody else could have the character fresh and do something new with it. That's why that happened. Because these, these you know, comics have been around forever. So I get that. But to me, Doctor Doom is like one of the main outside of Thanos. He's one of the main baddies of that universe. I think it was an opportunity for them to bring in somebody new. There's rumors that they've also talked to Chris Evans and a few others who are. It's like 
they're playing it safe. They want to bring back the actors people like, but I don't think what they fully get is people like them in those characters. Absolutely. They like Chris Evans because he is Steve Rogers as Captain America. Not I mean, saying, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say, you know, all of us are a little heartstruck that Tony Stark died. So to bring Tony Stark back after such, if that's what they're I doing, mean, I hate to say it, such a wonderful ending to his, yeah. uh, if that's what, if that's what they're doing. So yeah. we don't know if they're going to go with that angle or is he just going to play the part and keep the mask on. The other thing is, is that Dr. Doom has a very thick accent. You know, he's from a different uh, part of Europe, like Eastern Europe. And so I don't know. I don't, I don't know which way they're going to go. I just, I question it. I feel like Disney's playing it safe. I think they are fatiguing people with their content of Marvel. I think they bought these and I think they're trying to get their money back out of them. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think they're playing it safe because they're playing it from a business perspective, which I get. But uh, now you haven't seen Deadpool yet, right? Uh, the new one, no. I have not. We'll talk about that because there's a lot layered into that. We'll talk about that at some point after Doug okay. sees it. So, but no, my case on this, I think it's a bit lazy. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's already, I know I've said it already. He's already been in the Marvel Universe. Let's move on to somebody else. So. Yeah. Give, give somebody else a chance and let the story stand for itself. You know? And there's some great actors out there that could do it. But I'm sure he'll do fine. All right. <clears throat> this next one's interesting. Would not be nerd news without some AI news. Now, we've talked about the devices uh, quite a bit that's related to AI. Um, Humane was a company that had these pins. Well, it looks like the company is scrambling because the returns are outpacing the sales. Uh, we had videos where they would overheat get very very hot now these you, you pin on your shirt you don't want something that hot like burning a hole in your shirt no. uh and i think it was was it magnetic is that how it connected i don't think it was an actual yeah i believe there was a magnetic piece on the back side of your clothing mm-hmm. but that would also charge it wirelessly <clears throat> yeah yeah so this, this is there as of today the number of units still in customer hands have fallen closer to seven thousand. uh this thing was selling for 700 bucks uh, and it says here by June, only around 8,000 units had been returned. So, I mean, it's just, it's getting out of control. People are sending them back. I wonder what's going on with the rabbit. Now, I don't think the rabbit had, now it wasn't a pen. The rabbit was a handheld device. Think of it like an old school, almost like a Game Boy. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to do a little better. Both of they, the people had complaints of it being slow and don't really know how to apply it, you know, use it. So, this is interesting. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit some mistakes here while we were on the break. I talked about these. During the Amazon sale, I bought these bad boys. <clears throat> now, these are nothing brand is what the company is. And they're a set of earbuds. And these are the nothing earbuds ear A's, I think. Supposedly, they have chat GPT integrated into them. Very similar to a product like this right, that we're talking about. Um, I didn't read the fine print. When I got them. Now, I got them super cheap on an Amazon sale, but they only integrate with ChatGPT if you have their nothing phone or an Android phone. I didn't know that. See, I'm a, I'm a tech guy and I made that mistake. Now, I will say this. Why did I keep them? The sound quality is so on par with these bad boys, my Apple AirPods. Like the sound quality is as good. And in fact, I'm going to say the bass is a little punchier. Oh, and nice. the noise cancellation is just as good. So if you wanted an alternative, and I'm using these with them, my iPhone, obviously. Uh, so if you want an alternative, it's a little cheaper. I suggest these. But I bought them for the AI integration is the point, and I can't use it. <laughs> so, uh, But I'm not sad. Do you know why? Because I read on their website that when iOS 18 comes out this fall and they integrate chat GPT into iOS, these will get activated. And the reason why is right now I can like make on these, the app lets me make Siri my main app. Mm-hmm. Well, when Siri gets chat GPT, I'll basically have, so that's the other reason why I kept them. So can't use them right now. It's got to wait for some software updates. Sorry for my rant there. It just, it ties into this pin and the AI thing. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. I didn't know this. You're up on the next one, man. I did not know this. You added this. Yeah, so uh, every year, you know, I get a little excited about these keynote addresses. Uh, Apple has one, Samsung, Google. So Google's next in line with their uh, Pixel 9 event 
coming up on August 13th, just around the corner. The thing I like, and I've said it before about these keynotes, is this is a time for the company to shine, to show their products, to say, I mean, even, you know, I got excited about the Apple event earlier this year, uh, scheduled text messages, something as simple as that, that kind of makes the crowd go wild. So August 13th, we're going to look at two new models at least and a new Pixel Watch. The uh, Apple, nope, sorry. I got too many things in my brain. The Thank you. Google Pixel 9 Fold Pro. It's kind of a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be their new foldable device, the Pixel 9 Pro and the Pixel 9, kind of just their standard model. Yeah, there's been a lot of leaks. And actually, in this article that The Verge has, they actually have a breakdown of what you just said, the 9, the 9 Pro, and the Fold, and what the screen size is, the chip, the RAM, the front camera, a megapixel count. <laughs> So uh, it's funny how all this is kind of already leaked. You know, and that kind of an annoys me, but I get it at the same time. Yeah. It's it's hard to keep a secret, especially if you're, I don't know, are they called devs or your engineers have to take yeah. this out in the wild and test it. So it's hard well, they, to keep it a secret. Well, to be fair, Doug, they probably had all of the designs on an Android and they were easily hacked. Uh, oh, <laughs> Just joking. Uh, I love I mean, you, Android. That's funny. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I'm with you, man. Like, I'm not a. I'm, I'm. I obviously don't use Android, but I have a huge respect for them. I like them. I think they have a place in the world. I think they're decent devices. They're decent for the right use case and the right people. That's yeah. that's my thing. Um, I have no hate. I really don't. I, I admire them. Um, I like these events too because I love just seeing cool new things i mean it's it's neat so i'm with you I, even though i'm not an android user i love watching these it, you know just the same as if you weren't an apple user you love watching yeah. it's, like, it's nice to see where the market's going and what what they're doing and the stuff that they're adding and really they're an experience they're an event now uh, this fold is interesting because it looks like it's a screen on the back side and then on the inside it has the foldable it's kind of kind of a different design i like their take on it if you look at this thing it's yeah, you know, I think, uh, and I could be wrong here, Samsung kind of had the best first foldable phone, mm-hmm. and their hinges had a lot of problems. Yep. I watch a guy on YouTube that uh, likes to uh, test the phones to their max uh, ability and break them and set them on fire, or set the screen on fire mm-hmm. or whatever. But uh, that first one did not do good. He put a little sand on it, and it fell apart, so... The new Pixel Fold and the new Samsung Folds have done way better. And I'm sure this new Pixel 9 Fold is going to do even better than the last generation. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And it's funny how they influence each other, too. um, Because, you know, Apple's going to do a foldable. They're just going to be late because they're late to most things. You know, I I do think there's rumors of a foldable iPad. and We'll see about that. But... um, we can give the fold. I, I love the idea of the foldable stuff. We just need to give it more time. Now, I will say I am a fan of flexible screen since I bought my big monitor. And I see oh, yeah. the quality of it is so good and it, I haven't had issues with it. So that tells me, okay, this could apply to a mobile device in the future. So I do think it's going to happen. Wow, man. Look, they they leaked the watches too. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing that. to hide anymore. So Jeez. it's kind of uh, sad for the show, but then you... Get them to tell you what you're looking at on screen. No, no. Yeah, that's true. They just explain what got leaked, I guess. So more. Uh, it looks like they have new Pixel Buds coming in. They well. do. I saw that. I saw that. It looks so, very, very much that. like this case, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I have to rave about my not Apple yet. Air- not oh, yet. No. That's a main topic. What are you doing? Oh, okay, okay. See, I got ahead, guys. Now he's getting it. We see. I think I, we're just really excited. We are excited. <laughs> All right. Before hold that thought. That's important. <laughs> we're we're going to get to the next one. Uh, so this is crazy if you haven't been keeping up with it. And as an Intel fanboy, this hurts me. Now, I want to be clear. I say an Intel fanboy. It's my lean and my preference. Um, I respect AMD. And there are many times I'm like, well, maybe I'll go with an AMD processor. Intel processors for gaming specifically. I've always liked Intel. I've used many, many uh, AMDs in my time. I've, I've gone back and forth. I've switched teams to try them out. And I, I have my own beliefs on them. Great companies both do a great job. I just want to say that. However, Intel's having problem. I think right now I'm running a 12th gen right below this. Uh, I7 is what I have. Um, and they're, and this runs their, most of their line. Okay, so they have I3, I5, I7, and I9. 
if you are a 13th or 14th gen, which is called the Raptor Lake, they always put the lake after it. It's been having problems. What it is, is it degrades over time. They have a voltage regulation problem. So that means that the electricity gets too intense. And what happens is the processor starts to damage itself because it's overheating. And it doesn't matter what cooling you have on it. And it's a flaw in the circuitry and the design. And this is the first time Intel's really had this in a long time with these types of problems. And the downside is you can't fix it. Your processor is done. Like if it breaks, you start you start getting lockups, blue screens, all these problems. Well, there's going to be a patch come like I believe in the middle of of August, but the patch only helps you if you haven't sustained damage yet. It prevents damage from happening. It, it changes the voltage regulator to make it right on the software end. But if you've already had damage, you're you're out of luck. So all of these companies that that use these chips are extending their warranties out. And that's what this article is, is that Dell and Alienware, same thing, because Dell bought Alienware, Alienware, they've extended out to five years on the process. So you start having problems to replace it. Now, the weird thing about this is like, are they going to replace it with the same flawed chip? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, so this is a big thing. Um, MSI, all the big companies are starting to extend this. A lot of people, when they're having problems, they're just ditching the, the Intels and going to AMD. And I kind of don't blame them. So if I was building right now a machine, I would be so irritated because you save up all your money to build a machine. And if you land on one of these gens only for it to have this problem, I'd be pissed. Oh, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, I don't know. This is a big trip up for Intel. Now, what's not helping this is you have this issue going on and then Intel announced they're going to lay off 10,000 people. And they cited the reason why we're laying off 10,000 people is because we haven't capitalized on AI like NVIDIA has. And so as a result, we have to reduce our headcount in order to meet margins. So, and keep in mind, they're building a brand new chip factory. And I think it's in Ohio or something like that. That's supplemented by the government. So they got a lot going on, but I don't know, man. Intel's had some chip trip ups and I'm, I'm hoping they can bounce back from this. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, my whole kind of PC career, my PC life has been Intel. I've never ventured over into the AMD life, so I don't really They're good. know what it's about. Yeah, They make good stuff. They make good stuff that you do a little bit cheaper. Uh, what it is is their design approaches are different, You know, where there's memory on the chip called L1, L2, L3 cache. Like Intel might just, like, they'll they'll run the chip a, like at a different frequency no, they'll, they'll run it at a faster frequency whereas to compensate uh and they'll you know you'll have amd they'll they'll just add more more l1 and l2 memory or vice versa you know they 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 achieve the speeds in different ways and so they do a great job both do an absolutely wonderful job i you, i just want to be clear about that you can't go wrong they have great chips on both ends um so there are nuances. AMD has a history of run, running hotter, meaning that they heat up a little bit more. So you have to be more conscientious about certain AMD models. However, apparently Intel is not uh, not escaping that as well with this problem. So. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> you had the last one, man. Yeah. So uh, last story to close us out, Al. I'm going to hurt your feelings again. No, you're not. Okay. I've never played any of the Final Fantasy games, but there is a great deal this weekend. And, yep, go ahead. Do you know why you're not hurting my feelings? Why? I've not played all of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, yeah. I, but I have played some, so I'll, yeah. I'll talk about that in a moment. Go ahead. I'll let you finish up. <laughs> so this weekend, I believe, and they may push the sale, you can get one through six for about ten bucks a piece. And yeah. that's uh, pretty cheap considering, you know, they're retro. They're going to go for a little more money just because they know people want these games for nostalgia reasons. It looks like they're available uh, at Humble, is mm -hmm. a online shop, the Nintendo yep. eShop, and the PlayStation uh, yep. website. I don't believe the PlayStation Store on your consoles, but I could be wrong on that. Say that again? Uh, at PlayStation, but I don't know if it's on your console. Or yeah. That's for your PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, Nintendo I, eShop is okay. for eShop, or it's for uh, Switch, and then PlayStation. I haven't had for PlayStation play. since. Hey, no worries. Three no. or four, yeah. So. And Humble is like Steam. I use them a lot. Sometimes they Humble. The reason why they call that is they oftentimes will give the proceeds to charities. It's kind of oh, cool. They'll do like a, nice. a a Humble, an indie Humble. 
bundle. That's a mouthful. But if you pay like 20 bucks, they'll give you like 10 games, you know, and it all goes to charity. They do cool stuff. Oh yeah. They're great. Um, so my brother had gotten me, there was a re-release a a pixel remastered is what it was called. And that's what this is. The final fantasy one is a pixel remastered. I mean, you're looking at 60 bucks, which is $15. If you buy the whole bundle, that's what that is. Where these, you can snag individual ones for 10 bucks a piece. This is a really good deal. And uh, I played through the first one. I am almost done with the first one. I've been playing it on my Steam Deck. And it's the remastered version. And I'm, I'm on the last boss. Like, I've plowed through that game. But the bo- last boss is just kicking my tail. So what I need to do, I need to grind to get, like, leveled up. And I just haven't had time to do that. So, yes, I have played these. My favorite one out of them, because I've never played these straight through. That's why I went back and tried them. My favorite was on the PlayStation 1, number 7, Final Fantasy 7. And I've heard yeah. a lot about that one. It's really good. And then they did a remaster them first for PlayStation. You can get it on PC now. And I played that for a little bit. I've not beat any of these. I want to be clear about that. I've just played them. So I do like them. Uh, but they're a time investment. They really are, because there's a lot to them. But this is a great deal. If you're wanting to get into the series, you just you can't you can't beat it. And in the Verge article, they actually have the links. Uh, and what's cool is the Humble Bundle. I want to point out when you buy from Humble, those are Steam codes. So that means if you buy from Humble, it would activate in your in your Steam. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah, Keep that's why the library there. Yeah. Yep, that's why it says right there. So if you had a Steam Deck, you could play them, nice. just like I'm doing. So it's really cool. You know, looking at Final Fantasy, I never got into that, but uh, I may have told you or not, I loved Wild Arms for the PlayStation 1. So many hours on that game. Uh, kind of looking at the screens of Wild Arms, looking at the screens of Final Fantasy, they seem very, very similar. It's a JRPG, I, Japanese RPG. Yeah, they are. I, I remember you that. Uh, playing that game, and I just loved it. Hours and hours. It was a two-disc uh, set. Uh, back in the old days, you know, so uh, once you got to a certain level, like most people remember Metal Gear Solid, you'd have to switch to that, that second uh, CD. It wasn't a DVD yet. And you so, like this? Oh, yeah, it was really good. So you're watching there now. Uh, one of those, you had to chase these chickens and catch yeah. them. It was hilarious. And Dude, you would the horses and stuff. If you like this, there are, you would really like Final Fantasy. And I, I need to check yeah. it out. Yeah, but this game, yeah. I've put so many hours there. He's picking up a chicken. Yeah, I see that. It, so. That's really cool. And see, I just got. Uh, it's supposed to be really good. It's a newer. It, it's not an old one, but it looks like the same graphics. It was Sea of Stars, and it looks just like this. Um, you'd like these. These are JRPG games. They're they're great. They're turn based. But and no, I never so much to do with them. Oh, there's tons. And I never played this one on PS1, but it it's it's in that same vein. You would you'd really like those, man. You should probably check out those Final Fantasies. Now they're a time investment, but now is the oh, combat is the combat on this uh turn based as well? Do they I show? believe it is, yes. Yeah, here um, it is right there. Yeah, this is just like Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly. Yep. It was very easy to learn. Uh mm-hmm. There's so much involved, you know, look at him. He's got items and yeah. protection and fighting. And I, I think the hardest part about the Final Fantasy series, at least the first one, it gets better later on. It's that it gets pretty strict about elemental damage. So meaning if you had a water monster, uh, you know, if you used wind against it versus fire versus ice, the, like those, those so things. you really got to know what uh, yeah. attacks you have. Versus yeah, what enemies you can get your you butt beat get. until you figure out what their weakness is and that sort of yeah. thing. So. Yeah, man. Cool. I haven't played that in Wild Arms. I have to check that one out. Put that That's on the old one. back back catalog. Absolutely. All right. That does it for the nerd news, man. Let's let's get into it. So you went on a trip. Let's start with there. Where'd you go? What'd you bring with you? And let's do a little techie nerdy share. We're, basically, here's the, the main topic is we're going to share what we did in our absence. We both did some very geeky, nerdy experiencing. We want to share that just because why? We're wired nerdy and we like sharing those kinds of things. So start with you. What was your trip? Tell us all about it. So to set up my trip, I got to set up that I knew this year uh, I started a new job at the beginning of the year. I knew that there would be some trips involved and more time for vacation. So I purchased a iPad Air 4th gen, whatever, not the newest gen. I think it's the 4th gen. And then I got uh, AirPods, Apple AirPods. This is my slow transition to probably getting an iPhone this year. Easing into it. With that being said, I purchased those specifically for going to vacation, doing uh, work stuff. So fast forward to the vacation. I've got my 
Air, AirPods and my iPad on the plane. And I've got Panels, which we're going to talk about. So Panels is an app that uh, is only on iOS, I believe. It uh, It's kind of like a PDF viewer, but it does specific file uh, formats for magazines and comic books. And uh, you told me about this uh, file format and this uh, app. It works amazing. So what I did is downloaded a bunch of uh, Aliens vs. Predator and some Terminator, Terminator comics. Well, you're struggling so, today. Drink some coffee. I man. am. Yeah, you know, <laughs> talking too fast. So, you're good. So I you're downloaded good. those. I also uh, went to a awesome, awesome website you all have to check out called Retro Mags. So it's Retro <laughs> M-A-G-S, Retro Mags. Oh, you're killing me. And uh, I I, I'm having you research on the fly here. No, I love Retro it. Retro Mags is... uh, has ga Game Pro. Yes, sorry. Game Pro, Electronic mm -hmm. Game Monthly, Nintendo Power, all free. So what has happened is all these volunteers have highly scanned. digitally scanned their magazines into this database, and you can download it. You know, they it's all free, but they ask for a donation just to keep the website running, which, I mean, that's easy. So I downloaded a whole bunch of Electronic Gaming Monthly and Game Pro and stuff all the way from like the 1980s to current. Mm -hmm. And the nostalgia is amazing. What's funny is you can, I don't want to like get too far, but with the retro mags, they actually sell hard copies if you collect them as well. I didn't know this is where you were going to get your stuff. And I didn't know you were using panels. Now I discovered, pan I tried like, so there's, let's, let's back up a little bit. When you're doing comic books and you're reading them on a device, it uses a certain file type. They're like a .cbz. I believe you're right, yes. And so I had a bunch of these, and I gave them to Doug, and I went through all these different apps to find the best. I was reading the Sandman uh, series by DC because they had just come out on Netflix, the, the actual adaptation. And I wanted a good thing to read on, and I couldn't find an app that I really liked until I found Panels. Now, it, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this like, it's nine dollars for the whole year. There's a subscription. Yep. So they have you can do it for free, but they give you like bookmarks and a lot of other features. Paying. And cl cloud, you can pull from your yep. Google Drive. That was the reason why I paid the nine dollars because I, I I put all of my comics in the cloud, and the cool thing you can grab them from anywhere, right? And I haven't paid for the premium, but that was a very big learning lesson for me because. I downloaded a bunch of comic books. I downloaded a bunch of the video game magazines, mm -hmm. and I ran out of space on my iPad, and it was kind of frustrating. So yeah. I am planning on buying the full version of panels to draw from my Google Drive because yep. it just killed the storage on my iPad. That's why I did it. And for 9 bucks for the whole year? Oh, yeah. That's like less than a dollar a month. So well, My iPad isn't in here, but I believe there's a one-time purchase feature as well. I didn't know that. If there is, that is. So what it yeah. says is one-time huh. purchase for all the features they offer right now. Really? That's got to be new. Yeah, I'd say uh, my iPad's in the other room, so I'll... Hey, oh, you're right. About later. What is that? Once in a, li a panel's lifetime purchase right here. And it wasn't bad, I don't think, if you find the price. Local currency. So 20 bucks for the lifetime? Yeah, and so the way it explained is if you buy it like right now, you get all the features right now. So here's the here's the catch. Uh, now this is back in February 23. When they release Panels version three, then you have to re you have to buy a lifetime purchase for Panels three. Yeah, which honestly, no big deal. If you love two, you can stick with two. Wow, man! Hey, you educated me on this. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. So let so let's get into this. So. First of all, what I love about panels, you're right, it has great features. It's cool because when you flip it, the page, it looks like a page turn. It, the color, it has this feature where if you're looking at, and I don't know, when you read the comics, like looking at this, it can zoom in on each frame of the comic. It'll zoom in and just show you that one frame. Or like what we're showing on the screen, it can show you the page, the book spread open. Yeah. And I love the viewing options. That was my favorite thing about it. What did? How did you read? Did you just read it straight up like that, or did you actually? Because you can pinch zoom in if you want to like yeah, see something. That's in more what detail. I did. Is pinch zoom in. I didn't know about the zooming into the frame. And that may be I, a full full version feature. I don't know. It, it might be. Yeah. I think I have the free version right now. But yeah, I pinched zoom in to see some of the uh, words and the text. It was kind of hard to read, but it was amazing. You know, 
flipping it uh, was so easy. The iPad's got a beautiful screen. Yep. All the drawings and the illustrations and the comics that were so bright with vibrant colors and everything. So it was really good. And I put, I mentioned this before, I put my iPad here. I put a, one of those screen called Paper Likes on it. See, it's a matte finish. I've been finish. looking at getting one of those. See that? It's not, it's not glossy. It's almost, it's a plasticky thing. But you hear that? AMS, ASMR? Oh, nice. it, it roughs it up. It roughs it up to where what I like about it, it's when you write on it, it's like you're writing on paper. But when you're reading a comic, it's almost like that coarse feeling of a comic book when you turn the page, whenever you swipe. I don't know. It, this is the tactile thing. So I really like I really like that and I use that with panels. Um, but let's dive into I didn't know about this uh, magazine thing. I know other people probably knew about it. We were just talking about it. I had no clue. I knew you mentioned you found a place that had these, but I didn't know you were combining it with panels. That's so cool. I'm totally yeah. doing this. So the website, again, is called RetroMags.com. Mm -hmm. uh, tons and tons of stuff. I'm on it right now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring it up. Actually, I already have it open here. Oh, perfect. So their big uh, selling point is the video game magazines, but they also have other um, stuff. Yeah, they have other magazines out there. It Not looks a like. lot, though. Um, no. The big thing you can tell is the retro. I mean, they have a 1961 7-Up recipe book. Wow. They have the very, very first Nintendo. They have the very first Nintendo Power. So if that. you've got time and you've got a fast internet connection, just keep clicking and downloading, clicking and downloading. Uh, uh, yeah. Some websites like this limit you to how many downloads a day or hour or whatever. No, I downloaded, it took me a long time, the entire collection of Electronic Gaming Monthly and Game Pro. Dude, they have official strategy guides. Yeah. Uh, Look at some that. Some of them are uh, pictures only. They're waiting for people to upload them. Oh, really? They do have some on there as well. Okay. This, this is cool. It tells you the file size. Oh, you can torrent it as well. Torrenting is a downloading option. Uh, that's probably how you can download them quicker. Yep. Wow, dude. This is awesome because if you're going back through your game library, like retro gaming, whether you're playing on an original PlayStation or you're doing a like a ROM, you could go grab this strategy guide to help you like back in the day. Huh. Now, I've got to tell a story because back in the day, you know, when these strategy guides were in Walmart, we didn't have smartphones. So What'd you do? Shocker. So I literally was planning. I took a piece of paper and a little pencil. Here's 10-year-old Dougie going into <laughs> Walmart, look at a strategy guide, and I would write down cheat codes. But I would also write down, hey, this item is in this room on this level. Yeah. I mean, talk about old school research there. Yeah, I couldn't go to the internet. It wasn't really around for everybody then go to walmart get your strategy guide i wasn't gonna buy it it was like 20 bucks back then and write down what i needed very cool that's awesome man i, I used to do that kind of stuff too what's funny is i'm looking at let me see they have There's pc so gamer many magazines yeah they do Oops, they have on. game informer as well i i saw that i i saw that um if i'm tight i'm doing a search here for a pc gamer right here yeah they have UK PC Gamer, which, you know, it'd be interesting to see the European version of these magazines since I had the US Absolutely. version. Well, and I know uh, Brian, uh, I don't know, is he huh. kind of into Japanese carts and Japanese imports? Stuff? Somewhat, yeah, because of the, the collection stuff. versions, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it'd be cool to look at the PAL version of the magazine. Yeah. Do they have video games out here? I don't believe they have any ROMs or anything. I think they only have magazines and stuff. Photo coming soon. What is it? So there's a lot of stuff on here. You may have one right now that people are currently uploading the magazine or the strategy guide and stuff, and gotcha. they just kind of put a placeholder in there. Okay. It's very cool, man. Retro mags. I'll to, I'm going to play with that. Thank you for telling me about that. Brings back a lot of memories. Yeah. If there's a certain magazine you loved as a kid, like I love uh, Game Pro and I loved uh, EGM, Electronic Game Monthly. Yeah. So I had to go get them. Very cool. So on the trip, you had panels, you had your iPad. What other experience did you have? Yeah, so I recently bought some AirPods. I've never had AirPods before. Holy crap. Edit that crap part out. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> uh, did you, did you, are they pros or are they regulars? They're pros second gens, I think. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm getting introduced to this Apple world, and man, I've missed a lot. <laughs> you know, what do you like about them? What's your, I what's like your thing? that they uh, they have all these features. You know, when I talk, they lower the volume like way down so I can hear people. They had noise blocking. So when I had them in, you know, if you've ever ridden on an airplane, you hear the engine noise so bad. Mm-hmm, they the blocked hum. out all the engine noise. They have yeah. like noise canceling features on them. I've never yep. had noise canceling uh, headphones before. Yep. They have spatial audio. That's yep. the other thing. And yep. then when, uh, you know, my wife went with me when she would talk. Uh, I couldn't catch the first part, but then I started talking back to her, and it's lowered the uh, play volume. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to control. You know, you've got the little uh, piece that comes down. You click it, mm-hmm. like kind of squeeze it. It's the stick. Or, the yeah, stick. The yeah. stick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they fit in my ear very, really good. You know, I, I kind of gave the old uh, head shake test. They didn't fall out at all. That's cool. Now, they have adaptive on a lot of devices now, to be clear. I will say this. I think Apple does it better than anybody. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these nothing brands are the closest to Apple on noise cancellation that I've ever. I've And I've tried over the years. I've tried so many brands. Bose does okay, does really well at it. But I, I swear it is the AirPods. They, uh, they do the best at noise cancellation. And if you already have Apple devices, it just works so well with them. What's funny is I know people who are Android people, but they use these because they yeah. they they prefer them. Uh, they use the Apple AirPods with Android. And has wireless charging. Now, what was your charge time? They claim six hours of listening uh, without uh, with. Oh, six hours with noise cancellation and 30 hours. Uh, without that, that's using the case, the case charges. You know, that's funny because I have yet to charge them. You use them the whole trip and you haven't charged them. I swear. I And I still have I believe it. 40% battery. I believe it. They you are. My mind, so. Well, wait till you get that iPhone, my friend. Oh, I'm excited. You know, it's funny. The new uh, MacBook, I, there's people that like they're talking the MacBook itself can do like 30 hours on a charge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But they're going to, the, they're going to the, the processors that are like cell phone processors almost, but you're going to, your mind's going to be blown when you get your iPhone then. <laughs> Cause this so, is what they do. <laughs> I'm excited. The one thing I want to share with you and I couldn't drop it in our chat here, but it's in our Google doc at the very bottom. Okay. Is uh, one thing I have with AirPods. I had the Google pixel buds. Every time I drop them, the dang things come out. So I looked on Amazon because I knew this was a little more expensive. I had to have some kind of case that would keep my AirPods from leaving me and falling out. So Keith's going to throw it up here for those uh, watching. But for those listening, I got this this armored case that actually locks it shut. So if you drop it, think of it as like an OtterBox Defender case for your AirPods. It comes with a cleaning kit, too. Yeah, super cheap. $10, all kinds of colors. The um, only the, is it hard to get it in and out of this case? No, not at all. Because my only thing on that is the wireless charging probably won't work when the case is on, right? Uh, it says it does work. Uh, Are you now, kidding I me? don't have anything to wirelessly charge it with yet. I but... do. Dang you, Doug. Make yep, me buy I stuff. Make you buy something else. You jerk. But the little uh, tab on there. So for those not listening or ten watching, foot, ten foot drop. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Those not watching, it's uh, a little sleeve. You put your AirPods into it. It's got a little clip. It locks it shut, so if you drop it, that little lid's not going to open, and your AirPods aren't going to fall out on the ground. I've had that a lot with the uh, Pixel Buds. Oh, my God. You're right. The video is showing that. It charges through the case. Put that in your cart. (laughs) I'm adding that to my wish list. And all the colors, too. Yeah, and it comes with that free cleaning kit, which those usually are about five, six bucks a piece. Dude, when I am traveling, this is exactly what I would need. And well, if I ever get back to traveling for work, I'm totally doing this. I like how it bulks it up a little bit too, uh, but not too much. So those are in the other room as well. I'd show you live, but uh, yeah, that's I okay. I have the white color that's with okay. the black right there. Dude, that's awesome. Good find. Look at you, man. Look at you. The other thing I didn't know is when you, the uh, case makes noises. When you plug your case in, it makes noises. Yeah, it uh, chimes. It lets you know it's charging, yeah. So this uh, slow introduction to the Apple world has been great so far. Oh, man. We're getting him hooked there, buddy. 
The firefighter Matt's going to be the only uh, Android holdout soon. Yeah. But to kind of get us back on track, using the uh, iPad on the plane, using the AirPods, such a great experience, you know. That's good. So you really had a – mainly would you say it was battery? Like what was the experience? Just generally – was it was it that it was no fuss? Like compare it to when you traveled in the past with other devices. What was it about this experience well, yeah, the first that was thing different has for you. to be the battery life. You know, I've had a Samsung uh, Tab 7FE, if that's the name of it. Uh, awesome screen, really huge, too big, too big to carry around. It was a 12.4-inch screen or something like yeah, that. Great, great hardware. This is a 9.7-inch screen, I think, the iPad Air. Really easy to manage, really easy to type on the keyboard. And then uh, the screen just seemed amazing, like the colors and the depth and all the correct uh, technical words to describe it. Okay. So you think it just the experience. Overall, the battery and the ease of use of the iOS system. You know, I've been on Android a while. It's a little complicated, but it seems like iOS, uh, everything's right there. The settings are nice. I'll probably say the same thing about the iPhone, but. Okay. Well, I was just curious about like your experience of, um, you know, what, what the comparative experience was. Yeah. The battery is the main thing I believe. And then the connectivity with the, uh, AirPods. Okay. Very, very cool. Oh, and, uh, Apple pencil. I oh, what'd Apple you do pencil. with that? So the Apple pencil I've been using to play D and D jotting all my notes down and stuff. Yeah. But it's also nice to kind of flick your uh, comic book pages with the Apple Pencil. Oh, I haven't even thought about that. And the iPad Air, my Android didn't do it, or I didn't know how to, but you can split view. Mm -hmm. So I had a comic book on one side, and I was checking my email and looking at Facebook on the other side. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. So in my time, there's a couple of things I did. I messed with some mini PCs. I did that. That's probably another episode. Um, but I used to be a comic book collector, as we talked about before. I haven't touched my comic books in like a very, very long time. And every time we go, as in you and I, we always go to Comic Con. I always think, oh man, you know, I should like flip through those again. But recently, and let me share my screen. I started watching this show, which I highly recommend. Um, it's on Netflix. It's called The King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch. Now, they cover a lot of sports mem mem memorabilia, but the last season was all on, like, cultural things, pop culture, movies, video games, and comics, and I loved it. Ken Golden is known for getting the most rare collectibles, and then he auctions it off to the rich. Mm -hmm. It is a reality TV show, but it's so good. It's so much fun to watch. Like, they have, you know, Ric Flair's robe, if you're into professional wrestling. It's just such a great, fun show. Well, after the last season, it kind of hooked me on, they had a lot of comic books. And it got me thinking, like, I was like, wow, I have a bunch of comic books. And every time you and I go to a comic book convention, I always see these gradings. I'm putting them up on the screen now. What a grading is, you send it off to what's called uh, the CGC. They are the authority on, they look at the comic, the color, whether it's been damaged, and then they encase it in a plastic hermetically sealed and they put a rating on it. Why do you want to do this? Now you have to pay to do it and it varies, right? You're looking at $20 a comic, maybe more. It depends on, on a lot of factors, but I've always wanted to do this in the fact that it doubles the price of a comic value. And I've always thought, well, what I don't even, what I have, what does it work today? What is it not? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the pressure's to me just because of the nostalgia. So I went through my whole comic collection. Mistakes were made, though, because I've been out of the game for a while. I first started with this. It was called Key Collector, and it's an app. And what I found out was uh, these apps, you can take a picture of the comic book, and it basically builds your library, and it inventories all of your comics. Very similar to what we talked about before, like if you have a retro video game collection. Well, the neat thing about Key Collector is it tells you the cost and the price. So I went through and I you had to pay $20 for the whole year for a subscription, which I wasn't crazy about, but I went ahead and do it because I have a lot of, you know, Death of Superman. I have just about all of these. I, I, grand total, I think I have about 80 comics. And I went through here and I found out, oh, wow, like I own like, for example, I have this first print i have variants of these i have like four of these and they're about 50, anywhere from 15 to you know 
$75 kind of a thing. My goal is to find out what were my most expensive ones so then I can send them off to get graded. That's my goal. Well, as I went through, I had a one particular Superman one that I went through. It didn't find all my comics. And I thought that was weird. Because I was like, hmm, that's odd. Why is it not in here? Like, you're paying money. It should have a database. Well, I didn't realize the key collector, it only does, like, the fancy ones. And I had one comic, though, that was more of a graphic novel that was released in the 90s of the death of Superman. That thing, if you go on eBay, it was worth, like, $125. They didn't even have it inside of here. So then that got me searching Reddit. And come to find out, I found out that if you're still into collecting doing this, the app to use is CLZ. Now, CLZ, you can do for novels, comics, musics, movies, and video games. CLZ is a sponsor of like Metal Jesus, and it's a massive database. And I I started it, and it also was a, like a $20 subscription. Now, the downside of the CLZ comics, it doesn't tell you the cost price unless you pay a partnership company to tell you the, the cost. That's the downside. But I looked, and it had every one of my comics in it. It had a better database. So here's the weird thing that happened. I spent a whole afternoon putting all these in Comic Key Collector. I'm like, well, I'll get in there what I can get in there. At least I know somewhat of the values. And some of the values that they quoted, I go on eBay or other places. It didn't seem right. But I was like, you know what? I already paid the money, whatever. I downloaded CLZ after reading it on the uh, uh, on Reddit. And then I get pinged. I canceled the trial because I didn't want to get charged for it. I canceled the trial like only a, like an hour later. They reached out to me by email. They said, hey, we know that you canceled your trial. Was there a problem? So I get told the guy, everything. no, it's not you. It's me. It's like a breakup email. <laughs> and I just told him, I was like, look, this is what I did with Key Collector. This is what I found out. Uh, and they said, well, that really sucks. Uh, how do you ask for a refund since it didn't have all your stuff in it? So I sent them a message and Key Collector basically told me to go pound sand. No, all, all deals are final. So I canceled my Key Collector thing. I'll have it for a year. Out of nowhere, CLZ reached out to me and they said, hey, what did they, what did they say? And I said, no, they told me I can't. It's all right. I'll just wait. And then they fired back and they're like, well, how many comics do you have? I was like, well, just 80. And I know there's people that have way more. And they said, here you go. Free year. They gave me a, a oh, subscription man. for free. They said, we're sorry that uh, Key Collector treated you that way. Uh, so would it help if we just give it to you for a year free? And just and they said, you could probably get it done in an hour with 80 comics, getting them in there. And I was like, yeah, that's great. And I went ahead and did it. And so last weekend, it didn't take me that long. They use barcodes, way more accurate. And I have my entire collection now logged. Now, I don't know the prices. I, I'll have to pay. I think it is. Oh, there's a pricing in here. Like it's $60 for the year if I want to know my pricing. Now, that's something I'll probably pay once. Do it. Find out what my pricings are in the moment. Because my goal, of course, is to send them off to get graded. Yeah. Uh, so that was my thing. So I learned a lot. I also learned about like variants and getting back into it's It's so complicated. Like. There's reprints. I found out that, you know, DC, for example, did this thing where they, it was a direct sell versus a newsstand sell versus a had a DC logo on it. And if it had a DC logo on it, then it was worth like quadruple. It, it was crazy. So I'm holding my iPad here. And if you can see, this is my entire collection. You can see yep. here. Uh, yep. There Got we go. It. And what's neat is when you run through this, and if I, I find one, and I, I just tap on the actual comic itself, it gives you all of the details of the comic. Like when you scroll down, like when it was released, who wrote it, um, they tell you how many pages are in it, and then they tell you the cover price. Now, eventually, if I paid that, it would, you know, tell me how much it's worth. Uh, but the cool thing about it is, is like it tells you, there will be like, if this is issue number 500, it'll tell you if you have A, B, or C. That means it has a, a different cover. They would oftentimes release the same issue with different covers. And people want to collect all the covers sometimes, right? So I dove into this deep. It's been a long time. I did achieve my goal. Shout out to CLZ for being so awesome and yeah. giving me a year's worth of for free. Key Collector was good, but it didn't have all my stuff in it. It's really only if you're interested in just your high dollar value ones that you have. Um, but I don't know, man, I learned a lot and it was a nice calm day after we had dealt with like a lot of family stuff and death in the family and stuff like that. I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to do this comic book thing for a while. I'm going to dig back into it. And that was my journey. So 
I learned a lot. That's my spiel. Yeah. That's what I did in our, our absence. That sounds great. It was fun. So maybe next time we go to Comic Con, I'll actually uh, I'll have a little bit more idea of what I'm looking at yeah. <laughs> for some of these things. So, all righty, man. I think that does it. Yeah, it's good to uh, get back. Uh, we've missed everybody. We really appreciate you all listening. We've got that uh, merch store out there. It's uh, starting to get a little colder. We got some really great uh, hoodies, sweatshirt stuff, and uh, like Keith said, we do this because we love talking about tech video games movies comic books all this good stuff so when you buy something you're just keeping the lights on you're not paying us we're not making any money but uh, we really appreciate the support it's for the passion of it and to share our interest and to educate i mean dude just today you teach me like it's funny like the things that there's so much out there like you teach me about the magazine thing uh or the lifetime subscription to pay like like Dude, you can't keep up with all this. So no, all. that's what I love about it. You share and you it's learn. It's a great conversation between two guys who love tech uh, movies, kind of scared of AI. It's getting better, but yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> all right, everybody. You have a awesome, awesome day, and we will catch you on the next episode. Take care. See ya.